Hi everyone, my name is Dennis and today I'm making this coffee cup. And we will talk about tools for stone carving. Cheers! First of all, safety. Hearing protection is gonna be loud. Obviously, respirator. Then uh, safety glasses or full face mask. Uh, much better choice because of while cutting disc through a lot of small pieces of stone right into your face. Not a pleasant experience, so my advice, full face mask. Angle grinders. Two kinds of them. First one, let's call it professional. And the second one is just regular angle grinder with variable speeds. Main difference is uh, this one has a coolant supply through spindle and you will never achieve the same quality of polishing without cooling. And also it has much less RPM with much more torque. But this one is really expensive. If a regular angle grinder can cost about, I don't know, 100 bucks, let's say, uh, this one can cost from 400 to 800 dollars easily. So uh, for the purpose of this video, we will use this cheaper one. Drill bits. There is two types of diamond tools. Coated with diamonds and impregnated with diamonds. Coated means that metal blank was coated with a layer of diamonds and when they wear out only bare metal will remain. That does not cut stone well. Impregnated on the other hand means that metal and diamond were baked together uh, and as the tool wears it exposes more and more layers of diamonds. So impregnated tools better? No. So as you can see there is much more diamonds on let's say square millimeter on coated tool than on a baked one. It means that it's more efficient and cuts sharper, but wears out faster. So there is a lot to consider when choosing a tool. But not to confuse you, basic rule is cutting granite, take impregnant one, cutting marble or another soft stone, take coated. Cooling must also be taken into account if you are not using water. Tool must be designed for dry cutting. Okay, let's begin. This is a granite waste from previous project. And the first thing I need to do is to find a more or less flat side. Then mark the workpiece in the middle. And after all that being said about tooling, I take a coated drill bit and cut granite with it. This drill is pretty dull, so I decided to make one last cut before throwing it away. Now a few words about drilling technique. As you can see, I am not trying to cut with the entire area of the drill at the same time. I am trying to cut at a slight angle, constantly turning the tool. If you try to cut with the entire surface of the tool, it will be very challenging to keep it in place. After I went deep enough, I can hold angle grinder with one hand, with the other hand adding water to the cutting area, because I began to worry that the drill won't last until the end. After drilling a hole in the opposite side, I just have to mark the position of the handle and connect two resulting cylinders to each other. And here I am glad to present you the next tool, cutting disc. 
almost all the work in manual stone processing is done with this tool. Everything I said about drills also applies to cutting discs. A few more things I want to say. First, safety. Do not overload the tool. The weight of the grinder and your hand is enough for the disc to cut. Do not apply pressure to the tool. It will overheat and will cut even worse. Second, each disc has an indication of the RPM for which it is rated. Follow the manufacturer's instructions. Third, discs are also thin and thick. The thinner the disc, the sharper and more accurate it cuts, but less and less side load able to withstand. And more about safety. As you can see, I work without protective cover on the disc. In this case, it's a matter of convenience and also for the purposes of this video. I don't suggest anyone to do this. In most cases where it is convenient and possible, I use this guard. I ended up removing the main stuff. It's time to give the cup the shape of a cup. One important point here. This job will be much easier if you work with the music. Polishing pads. It's a subject that deserves its own video. Briefly, should be for dry polishing in this case. The number on the back side stands for grit. The lower the number, the more aggressive the disc. I use 7 steps here. 50 grit, 100, 200, 400, 600, 800 and 1500 grit. With 50 and 100 grit, you can still change surface geometry. You don't need to buy the small pads. Large disc wears unevenly, since they are worked on the leading edge, like with drills. Just take worn disc and scissors that are ready to be thrown away after and cut out the shape you need. Same story with Dremel attachments. 
Cut out any shape and use super glue to attach it to the holder. I made such an extension for the grinder, very useful tool for working in hard to reach places. Until not all of my viewers fall asleep during the theory, I'll turn on the music and start polishing. 